Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a light effect like this foggy with god rays and it has a texture with it I'm going to break down to you the process of creating the light fog like this and then how we can create those rays and also I'm going to be touching on what is called as light gobo and the light gobo is basically that texture that you see that is being cast by the light. This demonstration is going to be in Arnold in Maya. And here is the God Rays tutorial agenda. So let's get started. Okay, so I have this simple scene, which is gonna be good enough to demonstrate the process of creating God Rays. I'm gonna go into Create, Lights, and then Spotlight. One of the easiest way to place that spotlight exactly where I want it to be would be to go to the panels and then look through selected then zoom out with the mouse scroll this way I can focus exactly where the god rays are going to be focused on hit space bar and then left mouse button and then go up to go perspective so it's a pretty easy way uh, it's a pretty good practice so I'm gonna hit 7 on the keyboard and I'm going to hit R and then scale that spotlight up just so I can see it more vividly. Next I'm going to reduce the cone size, the cone angle size. This way it would be more focused towards this area. Some people do the approach for God rays by reducing the cone angle quite a bit and then they can duplicate the spotlight and uh, it gives you a further control over the god rays but this is not going to be the approach for this tutorial okay so now that i have this light when i go ahead and render i'm gonna see nothing when i hit render i'm gonna see nothing because i do not have any exposure so i'm gonna go to the exposure type in 12 and as you can see i do get some lighting here but now what i want to do is to create the fog so after the light is placed, I'm happy with how things are overall in terms of the placement of the light and I feel like it's hitting exactly the right point that I want. Now I want to add fog to the scene. How do I do that? Go into the render settings and then you look for environment in Arnold renderer tab. You click on this checker and then you add atmosphere volume. You render out and you don't see anything. What's missing here is that we need to identify exactly the attributes for that atmosphere volume. Now it's very important to be able to come back to the uh, attributes menu here for that atmosphere volume. So for that reason I'm going to deselect and select. Oops, I lost that selection. How do I get to it? You go back to the render settings and you can click here on that addition you made here so you click and then you get to see the attributes okay now that we have access to it I'm going to increase the density notice how crazy it gets so be very conservative with the amount that you increase in terms of the density in some cases you might even go to the point of going 0.001 okay you can also add color if you want that's kind of nice. There's some green color. Okay, so this looks nice so far. How do I create something like this? How do I have control over those rays? And how do I add this kind of technique? So now we've already created this kind of scenario, right? You have a light hitting a specific spot and it has that fog. So before I step to the point of talking about those details, let's talk about the effect here. So the things that we need to identify about the light attribute that would allow us to have more influence over the receiving result of the geometry uh, where that light is hitting the ground, those things are going to be related to the following. Penumbra, a Latin word, basically a mix of pene umbra, which means almost shadow. They connected it into one word and then penumbra becomes the almost shaded spot or area. So almost shaded, that's the meaning of penumbra. 
So notice the circle here. If you increase the penumbra, it's going to give you that almost shaded area. But because this is exceeding the cone angle, if the cone angle was kind of tighter, then we would have seen that effect. However, if you also, this is, if you, if you throw this to like zero, almost zero, it's neutral. So if I push it the other way around, the penumbra is going to creep inwards. And we start to see this result here. So you can fiddle around with the cone angle. So you get this effect. Now what else can we do? The drop off is pretty cool. If you increase the drop off, it's going to give you that dramatic theatrical kind of feeling. So let me introduce you to something uh, on top of this, just to kind of make that theatrical approach uh, interesting. I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit, just so we can see that light. Then I'm going to hit T on the keyboard. T is going to show me the point of interest that's going to be here. So I'm going to elevate this a little bit, push it inwards. So right now, the spotlight is looking at this spot. So if I hit Control D and then move it, notice how it's going to keep following that specific spot. Now I'm not sure if it's blocked yet. It feels like it should be blocked. But uh, the point of using the point of interest is to have them both focused on one area. So it's no longer like a natural light. So this is kind of like a theatrical approach if you want to go with that approach. So you can, um, in real time, you can move the light and you can see exactly where it's headed and render it in real time. So as you can see, it's a pretty cool way to make a theatrical light, right? Anyhow, that's just kind of a side note that I think is really valuable to know. So I'm going to delete this spotlight and then I'm going to uh, select the light. And then I'm going to hit Control D and I'm going to move. Uh, sorry, I'm going to hit W now after I duplicate it. Once you hit W, the point of interest no longer is activated. So I'm going to move it around. And notice here one thing that might bother you is like, I'm not getting any indication if I'm actually blocked or not. Right? Like if I go here and render. Well, it's blocked, but then Maya is showing you that, hey, it's everything is okay, it's all good. Here's something you definitely need to know. If you go into the lighting, you go to shadows. Now it's actually showing you how the lights are being blocked. So Control D, move. Arnold and render. Let me go back to the density of that fog okay how do we make those fog light to have the god rise effect you select a light and then you go all the way down to light filters then you click on add and keep in mind that this is only for arnold you click on light gobo light gobo is basically a mask so the light gobo would be something like this like in reality they would be things like that to put in front of your lights and the effect of these things would be something as typically known as these things here's a pretty cool example okay so back to maya double click on gobo or click on add and it would be added in here so double click here now i get to choose what is that texture so if i go here and select say grid I have already selected that spotlight and I've added to it a light gobo, but still I have not specified what is the gobo. So if I click on grid, see now the grid is that light gobo. Let's say I want to change that light gobo, double click on that light gobo and then right mouse button, break connection. If I click again and say Simple noise is exactly the light gobo texture that I used for this effect. So now it looks nice in terms of the light fog, but maybe I want to fine tune it. So you can change the scale and notice here on the left side, 
how the rendering result is changing nicely. You can simply right mouse button on this, set key, and then you can move the timeline and change the key. So for instance, right mouse button, set key. Let's see maybe if I want to change other attributes as well. You can see here it's sort of like it softens the difference between the black and white. You have also uh, the amplitude is what softens the difference. You can change the threshold and all this. So yeah, that's how it goes. So let's say now in this case it's bothering you that it's revealing the light gobo on the ground because sometimes it doesn't look attractive. Like if you look at this example here with DK and all the changes that I made with the penumbra and all this, I still don't really like the result here, even here as well. So how do we fix this? What I need to do now is to have that light to ignore this ground. So right now the result that I have is this one. I'm going to select the ground. This is the spotlight. So what I need to do is called light linking. I'm going to select that light, then go to Windows, Relationship Editors, and then light linking and light centric. If you go to object centric, it's gonna be oriented based on the object, but you can always toggle with later. So light centric, and just to clarify real quick, this is where you can toggle between light centric and object centric. So what is light centric and what is light linking? Light centric means you get to choose a light and based on that light you can deactivate or activate certain objects. Now what is light linking? Light linking is the process in which you get to choose certain lights and you get to control their influence on the geometry. Meaning, let's say you have a spotlight here and what you want to do is to have it to light the very bottom of this ship, but you don't want it to acknowledge this surface. Then in that case, you would select that spotlight and say, don't acknowledge this, ignore it, and go straight to the bottom. So this is light linking. So let me do light linking here, but what am I gonna do exactly? So the process is gonna be selecting the light and then going to the surface and say, you know what, just go through that surface ignore it. Maybe that would give me a nicer aesthetic. So let me draw a region here. Select that light. Click on list and manual load. That is going to help you on actually having that specific selection to be chosen. So you select exactly the spotlight that you want. List and then manual load. Now here is the spotlight. And you can see by default, it has influence over everything. Any light you create is related to every single object in your scene by default. Okay, now I'm gonna be looking for that geometry here. Manual load. After I select the geometry here, just normally in the interface, when you go to the list and then manual load, then it would load that selection for you. So if I select on that light, you can see that it's normally connected with that geometry. So all I need to do is just go here with the mouse and then left mouse button. Now they're no longer related. So if I re-render this now, that God rays light is not going to see the ground. So I'm only getting to have that shower of warm God rays. Let's see if that's gonna work. Hit play. While it's rendering, I'm just going to mention that notice the difference between those main beams and the darker areas. So those are determined by the black and white texture of the simpler noise. So you can see here the threshold, having it to have a high contrast between black and white. It's going to give you a result where you have either intense beam or very weak beam. But if you reduce the threshold, 
that's gonna make a more silky transition between those beams. Another thing I want to mention is that if you go to the render settings and you go to the atmosphere here, notice that you have something called samples. If you are not happy with the sampling of your renders, you can always check the settings for sampling and I will provide a link for my tutorial on sampling because it's really important to know how to sample your scene. But on top of that, you can still get some sampling not just from the rendering of the materials itself, but rather from the intensity that you're getting out of the fog. And to fix that, you just increase the sampler amount, say 8 maybe or something like that would be kind of a good increase. So for me, I really like the look this way even though it's nice to kind of have the light go on all this but it really depends on the project it depends on the approach or what is the message that we're trying to tell all right go ahead and have fun creating all the god rays you want <laughs> 